ozonolysis E is the most important, you know, reaction. Very important. Be with me. Be in sync. Very important terms coming your way. Let's emphasize here ozonolysis. Ozonolysis of alkenes involves the addition of ozone molecule to an alkene to form ozonide. Is it not obvious? Ozonolysis. Let's break it up. Let's understand it. Let's do the etymology. Ozono. Ozone is here. Can you see the hidden ozone here? Lysis. Lysis, you know, breaking, cleavage, right? So, break. Breaking in the presence of ozone. What's an ozone? O3. O3 molecule we have seen so many times now, isn't it? Do you remember while talking about the formal charges was the first time ozone molecule was shown to you. So now what is going to happen is we are going to break the alkene in the presence of ozone. What is going to be formed is ozonide. Okay. Now ozonide is a very important term here. I'll come back to it. So cleavage of ozonide by zinc and water to smaller oxidized molecules. So zinc H2O is something that you will see written. Very important. You will see that if it's not zinc H2O something else, it can be the ozonolysis can be of various types, can be oxidative and can be reductive also. So right here, what is the topic? Oxidation. So right now, the only thing I want you to focus on without wavering, without digressing anywhere, I want you to be focused on three things coming here. First thing, O3 reaction with alkene. Second thing, the formation of ozonide. And the third thing is that this ozonide is further cleaved to give you the small fragments in the presence of zinc water. So what is this ozonide is nothing but ozonide is a cyclic peroxide derivative which looks like this. This is ozonide. Cyclic peroxide derivative. Where do you see peroxide? This is a peroxy linkage. So what is it? It's a cyclic. Is it not cyclic? Yes, it is. So it's a cyclic peroxide derivative. Don't you agree? It's a cyclic. It's an ozone. You can see a uh, you can see a peroxy linkage present. So it's a cyclic peroxide derivative. Ozonide. Now what we are saying, the third one, third one was zinc water. Okay. ZnH2O. This is how we write it. Please check. Alkene, O3, ozonide, add zinc, water, small oxidized fragments. Check this out. What's happening? The mechanism. In the presence of ozone, you can see a cyclic ozonide derivative being formed. Right? After this, there is some, this is the ozonide. After this, there is addition of zinc water, which gives us, please check, we are getting one ketone, one aldehyde, where to get what is a story to be dealt in few seconds. But the mechanism should be loud and clear that first what's happening is, on this carbon-carbon double bond, this ozone molecule is reacting and what's happening is simply, please observe, I can show it like this. This is coming here and this is coming here so that you get a temple kind of a compound like this. Right? And whatever is out here retains. So this is what we get, which on further rearrangement gives us ozonide. Ozonide now, you know, is what? Is this kind of a peroxy, peroxide derivative, right? This further on addition to this ozonide, if we are adding zinc in the presence of water, what we are getting are the oxidized products. So let's now break it up. Please observe all the steps. Step number one, step number two, step number three. Step number one is simply this O3. Check this out. Be with me. Look at this O3 molecule. Look at this. What we are getting is a cyclic 
membered ring where all the three oxygens are together and then further some rearrangement happens and we get ozonide and this ozonide now on the addition of zinc in the presence of water are giving us this oxidized products check this out let's take examples first one propene let's add o3 to it what we are getting is this propene ozonide you have understood from the mechanism previously that o3 right this is how i can write the product that gets formed is first this the three oxygens together and then there is some sort of rearrangement to give you propene ozonide and then if you add zinc in the presence of water zinc h2o you get ch3 cho and hcho so possibly what's happening is the bond is cleaving here and what you're getting is a double bonded oxygen here also with this carbon here also fragments you have got fragments means small part out of a big part and one of the oxygens which was alone is giving us zinc oxide okay so check this out if i'm talking about this kind of an alkene o3 please see first step is the three oxygens are going to be together like this and then there is rearrangement so that you get this kind of an ozonide after you have got this ozonide product uh, ozonide intermediary product then what is going to happen is you add zinc h2o finally what's happening is you are getting this acetone and you are getting this hcho right so the products is very simple i'll give you a trick to remember the products understanding should be very much crystal clear that the reaction is passing via ozonide formation and then there are fragments of the oxidized products that you are getting check out the trick to remember simply what i want you to see is if there is a double bond cleave it break it and on the breaking side put the two oxygens as simple as that check this out let's carry our axe break it put two oxygens as simple as that ma'am what if it is only this kind of a thing break it put two oxygens what if ma'am it is this only one hydrogen here cleave it break it put oxygen in between as simple as that what if it is simply an ethene simple no worries we get two hcho do we get aldehyde do we get ketone depends on the kind of alkene which is present there is no thumb rule that this is only going to be the product check it out simply cleave it put two oxygens that's it so out here for example this is here can you see put two oxygens so you get a propenone and you get hcho break this put o o here we get ethanol and we get formaldehyde simple right 